Stay tuned to learn the six critical nutrients for brain health as we kick off National Nutrition Month with Joni Rampola. If you want to discover more about your brain health and potential risk for cognitive decline, I invite you to take a quiz. This is not one of those standardized stress-inducing tests. This is just for fun, but it is designed based on your results to guide you toward the best next steps to optimize your brain health. And you can find it at www.rootcausology.com slash quiz. It'll also be in the show notes. Hello and welcome to Get to the Root of It. I am Laurel Brennan, your host, and I am here with Joni Rampola today. I'm very excited for us all to learn from her. Joni is an expert res registered dietitian, and Joni takes clients from nutrition confusion to nutrition confident. She is the founder of Nutrition Coaching for You, which empowers individuals on their journey toward optimal nutrition making peace with food and body weight, preventing disease and providing meals to nourish their family and foods everyone, to nourish their family with foods everyone enjoys. Joni is the chair of Advancing Health and Wellness Leadership Team for Carroll County, Maryland, improving the health of her county for the past seven years. You can find her leading a weekly walk each Sunday morning with her pup, Raven. I'm very excited to learn about the walk because I didn't know about that. So welcome, Joni. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so what's your story? What's your why? How did you become a dietitian? Why, so why how, you, why, yeah, yeah let me, I'll tell you the story of how I became a dietitian because it's, it's kind of a different path than most people. I didn't choose it as a career. <laughs> it started when I was in high school. And I say I passed out, but it wasn't an unconscious thing. It was conscious. It was almost daily where I would get kind of my vision blurs, my speech blurs. I could walk into walls. Um, I just had total brain fog, wasn't functioning. And I'd say, all right, I need to lay down. I can't function. And that's what I called passing out, but it wasn't. Um, and I would just lay down. And when I was in the state, you couldn't wake me up where at nighttime you call my name and I'm up instantly. And my mother would take me to doctors and they'd say, it sounds like she has diabetes. Let's give her the glucola drink test. And I would drink it and they'd come back and say, you're one or two points away from diabetes. Um, now we have pre-diabetes as a diagnosis, but we didn't then. So they would just let me go home and nothing changed. Um, and then it was like literally the fifth doctor that my mother took me to. I was expecting to drink this little glucola drink and then send me home. But he says, no, sit in the chair. I'm like, sit in the chair. That's different. He goes, tell me what you eat in a day. I'm like, oh, this is, you're like a whack job. There, what I eat, how could that affect anything? So, well, I wake up, I have a pastry and orange juice for breakfast because the TV tells me that's an okay breakfast. And then my mother gives me lunch money to buy lunch at school, but I was a little entrepreneurial and I like to pocket a little bit of money. So I'd buy just that belly filler. I grew up in Philly, a soft pretzel or a brownie or something of that sort. And then by the time I came home, I I would literally just pass out and my mother made a beautiful dinner every night. Um, and that was, that was my life. And this doctor, all he said to me is eat protein at breakfast every day. And I did. And it totally changed my life, changed my mood, changed my grades. I didn't pass out anymore. Um, so I decided I wanted to learn more about nutrition to understand what was actually happening to me. So I never thought of dietetics as a career. I went to school for nutrition just to understand my body more. But now I love it as a yeah. career and I'm happy I'm here. Right. Well, it eventually obviously led to a career. So what, when was that transition? You went from studying nutrition to becoming a dietitian nutritionist. Oh, right, right away. I mean, I've been a dietitian okay. for 30 years. Yeah. I didn't do anything else okay. in between. It, like it prompted from high school, just wanting to learn more. Okay. Got it. 
but it was spurred on by your own personal experience and this knowledge that um, just eating protein for breakfast could change my life. <laughs> totally changed my right? life and my career for that matter. <laughs> yeah. So in case there's anybody else who has experienced that same thing before, and I would put my hand up because I'm in that category and my daughter, we, you know, where everything kind of goes black you don't, my daughter actually has fully passed out twice. Um, but I would just have to like hold on to the wall and things would, I'd get tunnel vision and black and I'd be dizzy and it would eventually come back before I fully fell down. Um, but it, you know, that happened for many years. I was probably in my thirties before I realized by a nutritionist who taught me I need to eat protein and fat every time I put food in my mouth. That was the first time I'd heard of it. So for others who are, might be listening, who've had that same experience, can you explain what's happening? Why does that happen? Yeah. So the first meal of my day was just carbohydrates. It was a sweet and orange juice. And so when that happens, your blood sugar rises or spikes, as we like to call it. So it gets too high. Your body kind of goes panic. Oh, no, blood sugar is too high. Where if I would have eaten some protein and fiber, that would help slow down that blood sugar rise. And that would be a balanced meal. But when your blood sugar is high, insulin comes out in large quantities to get that sugar down. And it always goes lower than where it first started. So it's like that roller coaster going high. Then when it goes too low, you either feel that shaky, miserable, I need something to eat or just tired. Like people that get that two o'clock energy slump in the day. It's like, yep, I know you didn't have protein for breakfast. <laughs> So a, a rise in the glucose, which results in to, which results, um, which causes a rise in insulin. And both of those things are problematic because why? Yeah. So why? I mean, it has to happen normally. Like that's what's supposed to happen. If I eat a balanced meal, my blood sugar still goes up, but not as high. So it'll go up a little bit. Insulin does its job, takes it down a little bit. And you normally have like this slight little curve up, down, up, down throughout your day when you eat. When it goes too high because your meals aren't balanced, insulin comes out too much. And insulin has a lot of jobs, not just taking, insulin's job is to take that sugar out of your blood, the glucose, and bring it to your cells for energy. So every time you move, you're moving because you have glucose for your muscles. Um, but when insulin comes out too high, it has also a job of laying that glucose down as belly fat. I see you have a friend there. <laughs> yes, here comes Rocco, who's going to join us for the rest of the conversation. Awesome. <laughs> if, you can't see, if you can't see, if you're just listening, my dog just jumped into my chair with me. <laughs> so yes, so it, if somebody didn't correct that, so let's say you didn't learn from your doctor in when you were in high school that you should have protein with breakfast. What I would, would have diabetes by now. <laughs> hundred yeah. percent. Yes. And, and yeah. that uh, chronic elevated blood sugar. So not a one-time thing, chronic meaning this is the habit that I'm doing every day. My blood sugar's on this roller coaster ride up, down every day. When you live that lifestyle, high blood sugar, if you think about it, blood sugar means that glucose molecule or sugar is in your blood. Your blood travels through all your arteries, big and small, to every organ in your body. So you can get heart disease, kidney disease. It affects your eyes, your feet, your gums, your nerves. So every organ in your body is affected by too high blood sugar for too long of a time. So it is something like you could prevent so many diseases just by controlling that blood sugar. Yeah, that's amazing. So glad that you bumped into that doctor and that he <laughs> changed your life and now you're changing the lives of others. So, Absolutely. <laughs> so what, what would be a better breakfast than a pastry and orange juice? Yeah. So I, 
everybody I work with, I try and get them to have some protein at breakfast because I do think that's important for so many different reasons, depending on people's goal. Um, but it could be something simple and quick, like a Greek yogurt that you add berries, nuts, or seeds to. It could be an egg, of course, and I love adding vegetables to my egg or the little frittata where you put them in mini muffins <laughs> and just pull them out. You could freeze them and heat them up really quickly. Um, or a breakfast burrito, which could be an egg and vegetables or beans wrapped in there. It could be the previous night's dinner that you have for breakfast. Nothing's wrong with that. There's no, it has to be this. Um, it could just be a protein powder. So protein powder that I mix in a smoothie or I put in my oatmeal if it's a plain or vanilla. And, you know, I buy a plain oatmeal. So sometimes I'll put vanilla protein powder in my oatmeal. It makes a delicious vanilla. Then I'll add my fruit or chia seeds or flax seeds to that. So many options. Could be just a whole grain waffle with peanut butter, sliced strawberries, and a sprinkle of hemp parts on top. Right. So it sounds like protein is, is your, your main kind of focus, but you're also doing fat and fiber as well. So how does that all work together to help mitigate that glucose and insulin rise? Yeah. So if I still had the pastry and orange juice, but I added a source of protein, like maybe an egg and avocado toast <laughs> to it to get that fat and whole grain in there. My blood sugar may still go up because I'm having the pastry, but it's in a, it, the sugar's absorbed much slower. It's not this hitting my bloodstream from zero to a hundred. So when it's absorbed slower, insulin comes out at a slower rate. And, and that, that is key is balancing meals. So to me, it's protein and fiber, um, as well as a healthy fat. Yes. And it's not just fat, it's healthy fat. <laughs> right. Not just gnaw on a stick of butter, but, but <laughs> olive, olive oil, avocado, nut seeds, all those. Yes. Did I, did I, did I do well? Do you give, give me an Absolutely. egg for picking the Okay. <laughs> Those and are some I healthy add into that list the fat from fish. I call a healthy fat too. Oh. So like a salmon, smoked salmon could be a great breakfast. Lox. That's what I just had. I just had salmon for my breakfast at Perfect. 1130. So that, that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So who normally comes to you to get help? What clients say, Joni, I, I need your help. So I typically see men and women between age 25 and 65, um, mostly coming to me for weight loss, which is funny because that, that is the main thing I focus on, but I never talk about their weight. <laughs> we talk about creating habits of health that can help get you there, but blood sugar control, preventing disease, um, and just people that want to eat healthier to help the next generation, their children, make better habits for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So my focus is, is brain health. And you already mentioned um, how impactful those giant spikes of the glucose insulin impact, not just the glucose and insulin, but it's impacting the rest, the whole rest of your body, all your blood vessels, which then impacts your brain. Um, so I'm very excited to be having this conversation because managing glucose and becoming, you know, metabolically flexible, uh, quote unquote, where your body can use the ketones and the glucose and you're not having those giant spikes is, is one of our main focal points to mm -hmm. optimize brain health. Now, yeah, you, as a some, some physicians actually call Alzheimer's type three diabetes. Because, right, because the the brain is not utilizing glucose well, mm -hmm, yep. so uh, one of the one of the main contributing factors, also because it's just so common. Like if you, you know, I don't know, surveyed a thousand people, it, Americans, <laughs> let's say, it might not be the same if you went to 
Japan, but um, how many people are metabolically flexible? Like I've heard it's, it's very small percentage. Yeah, I agree. It's, you know, we're in a food environment and a lifestyle where we sit most of our day, we're not active and our food environment is processed foods. And it's, it's hard to do something different than the lifestyle that you see everybody else doing. Right. Yeah. You mentioned sitting and that impacts our glucose as well. So yep. if we were to eat and then go take a 10 minute walk, we would have less of a glucose spike than if we eat and sit. Absolutely. Right. Yes. So I definitely want to get, want to, get to the walks that you lead. So we'll, 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 we'll circle back to that when we're talking about what you do locally, but um, I want to jump into the whole brain health focus because in addition to, you know, keeping, um, becoming metabolically flexible and keeping glucose levels relatively steady, as a dietitian nutritionist, you're looking at nutrients too. So what nutrients are important for brain health? So for brain health, I'll say I have about six that come to mind. The top one is omega-3 fatty acids. So that's heart health and brain health. I think of both of them. Um, it, a lot of great research showing it improves learning and memory and just supports your brain in general. And the American population doesn't get enough omega-3 fatty acids. If we would have fish at least twice a week, you know, it would definitely increase those omega-3 fatty acids. But in most products that we find on our shelf, there's omega-6 fatty acids, but not omega-3. And that our balance is just off. We need more omega-3 in the diet. So that is one of the top nutrients that I look at. Um, another would be vitamin D, which is the sunshine vitamin. We get it from just exposure outside, 15 minutes a day, having our face and hands exposed to the sun. There is some in foods. Um, research has shown a 40% lower incidence of dementia compared to those that in people that take a vitamin D supplement, if they're not getting it naturally compared to those not taking a supplement. So vitamin D can decrease your risk significantly of dementia. And I do think most Americans are deficient in vitamin D. That is one of the nutrients of concern. Um, but yeah, so that, that's another one. The third one that I pick, um, is vitamin B12. And along with other B vitamins, B12 plays a role in providing these brain chemicals that affect our mood and our mental performance. And research has shown if you're deficient in B12, then um, you're at greater risk of anxiety or depression, memory loss, mood swings, all those things that affect. So B12 has many, um, many jobs in the body, but one of them is supporting brain health. The fourth one I would say is fiber. And again, everything I'm mentioning, I feel like we don't get enough in our diet. If we would eat whole unprocessed foods. We may be good in fiber, but fiber is one of the beauties that help decrease your blood sugar level. Um, it slows down the absorption of, of carbohydrates into your blood, which decreases your risk of Alzheimer's disease. And fiber is in your whole grains like oats, in beans, in your vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds. Um, having a source of fiber is great. 25 to 28 grams is what's recommended. The average American gets 11 to 14 grams a day. So we're not hitting that mark at all. <laughs> right. So right. My, my fifth is flavonoids, which is a big word. <laughs> um, and it's not, it's like a category of nutrients, not really a single nutrient, but it's a type of antioxidant and it may lower the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease by half. 
So huge, huge. Flavonoids are found in things like your dark green leafy vegetables, beans, broccoli, oranges, olive oil, green tea. So it's in there. We're getting some. Um, but some people may not be choosing enough just better for them foods to get to get a good amount. The sixth one is choline. And this one I feel like might be a little bit controversial, um, but it's the brain's messenger, kind of maintaining that communication between the brain and the muscles. And we need it for that communication. It's in research, it has reduced anxiety. And you can find choline, I think, at the main source is eggs, maybe because eggs promote themselves so much as being a good source of choline. But eggs and Brussels sprouts and lima beans and wheat germ. Um, but it's one I'll say I don't suggest taking it as a supplement just because there's a risk of depression. And like there's a certain type of person where if they take a supplement, that's choline, it can lead to depression. But if you get it in foods, it's a great help um, right. for so brain health. What would you recommend? Yeah. What would you recommend for someone who is vegetarian or vegan? Because a lot of those that you just mentioned um, might not be in a vegetarian or vegan diet. So Russell sprouts, beans, wheat germ. I think eggs were the only ones that I said that was a meat product. So, but I mean, for all of those um, top six, those top six brain nutrients. So for someone who's vegetarian or vegan, how are they going to get their B12 and their so I'll start with omega-3. Okay, um, omega-3s. So you can take a supplement form of omega-3 that does not come from fish. It comes from a sea algae, and that is a great source. There is some ALA omega-3 in our like walnut or flax seed, chia seed. Um, your body absorbs much less of it in those type of sources than you would fish, but they're still sources. But I would recommend an algae supplement. Like to me, they they have the, the best bang for your buck. Vitamin D is sunshine. <laughs> so, and right. mushrooms is actually a great source of vitamin D. Portobello mushroom, they are like the only vegetable that is considered a good source of vitamin D. Yeah. B12. Um, nutritional yeast, if you're familiar with that, it's like a Parmesan cheese kind of flavor, comes in a shaker jar. You use it the same way you would Parmesan cheese, shake it on things. That is actually a really good source of B12, or it could be a supplement as well. Fiber is in basically all your plant foods. So there's no fiber in meat products. So not worried about that one. Um, same with the flavonoids, they're in in the plant-based products. Um, choline definitely has good sources as well. Your Brussels sprouts, lima beans, wheat germ. Okay, perfect. So yes, it's so, easy to get your nutrition no matter what your lifestyle choices are. Perfect. Thank you for highlighting those. Um, if someone chose like a very specific diet, what could be potential downfalls? So say if they're, they're just doing um, Mediterranean diet or they're just doing mind diet or they're, or they're just doing vegan, what could be potential downfalls there? So I'll look at first something like the mind diet um, and, and also Mediterranean. So it doesn't tell you specifically portion size it doesn't give you specific foods to eat, right? They're categories. So people can still over consume or not make ideal choices in those categories. Um, so, so that, that would be, that would be one. Like my diet is, is specific with certain foods, but not portion sizes. Um, but okay, then it doesn't talk about lifestyle either, right? Because foods matter, but it's also 
How are you moving your body? What are you doing to control stress? Like there's so many lifestyles. Are you a smoker? Are you exercising? Like so many things that affect your brain health, your overall health, your heart health, your blood sugar control, your weight. Um, and I, I like to work with people as a whole. So if you were doing a specific diet, we look at all the factors included. We talk about that portion size and specific nutrients that an individual needed to hit. Like I let people do whatever type of diet they want to do, right? But I'm going to help you do it in a healthy way. Yeah. So you're going to individualize it for that person based on their, their likes and their, even their, their time. Like, I'm sure you would treat somebody differently who like is a nurse working nurse, nurse, you know, a night shift um, versus somebody who's a, a kindergarten teacher and can cook every night. Um, like, how does it, how would it look different based on their, their lifestyle, their, their interests? Both of us have our dogs in our, in the background. <laughs> making noise. My neighbor just got a delivery. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're part of the family too. They're part of the podcast too. <laughs> yeah. So somebody working a night shift, I would give very specialized attention because when we work against our body's circadian rhythm, and what I mean by that is we are programmed to be awake with the sun. Like that is just how our body optimizes our digestion and everything about us. So when we're working a night shift, we're going against our own internal body clock. And there's a ton of research showing night shift people just tend to gain more weight, have digestive issues. So I would, I would really work with them on honing in on that weight control and what they're eating and timing of eating and, you know, a lot of times when you work the night shift, you're too tired to do anything else afterwards because it feels like you didn't sleep because your sleep schedule's messed up too, so they don't exercise. So I might make a plan for how do I incorporate exercise in just without taking time to do it? Like if I'm sitting at a desk, can I like hold my weight up right above my chair and do some chair squats? <laughs> can I, you know, just... There you go. Just little you things. Do it right now. <laughs> yes, just little things that yeah. you can do that take no time out of your day, you know, like parking farther away. Like I get those extra steps, taking the stairs while I'm at work in the hospital, if that's where I am. So ways you can still hit a goal without um, having to change your lifestyle too drastically. Because yeah, I feel like changes that don't feel like you're doing too many things differently or more sustainable than, all right, you got to scrap everything you're doing and let's start with square one. That's never sustainable right. for people. Right. So you mentioned um, belly fat and night shift. And I know that, you know, I'm, I'm 50 now and I get a lot of feedback from, from clients, uh, whether they're my yoga clients or my functional medicine clients <clears throat> that this belly fat sort of seems to be creeping on and I'm not doing anything different. So what do you tell those clients that come to you and say, you know, I, I'm not real pleased with these pounds that have showed up around my middle. What could be going on and what do you advise? So around age 50 or maybe even earlier for some people, we have a drop in estrogen and progesterone. So along with that drop comes the law, like many metabolic changes happen. <laughs> but one of them is along with aging, the loss of estrogen and progesterone also lead to muscle loss. So as we lose some of our muscle, muscle is the most uses the most calories of anything in our body, right? So that's where calorie expenditure comes from. So if I do nothing different, but I just go through the menopause process and lose a little bit muscle, I now need less calories to sustain myself. So in that process, if I eat the same, I am going to gain a little bit of weight. 
So you have to match your new body size. And again, eating protein <laughs> is one thing I recommend to help preserve the muscle that you have and also some resistance training. So not just that cardio. I feel like people want to hit the gym and do cardio first. And I, I usually lean more to the resistance training to maintain your muscle or build some muscle. But then there are some things that they just happen, right? Even if your weight doesn't change, when you go through menopause, you know, your breasts sag a little bit more. You can't, you can't help that. You get your fat distributes differently to get a little bit of tire around your belly. Like I, I can't change those things per se, but we can help you make the best of your weight and tighten things up and try not to lose muscle mass. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thank you for, for highlighting muscles and, and how they are just more, um, metabolically, they participate different metabolically than, than fat. So you're burning more calories just by sitting still. If you have, you know, if you, if you have more muscle, Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's, that's super helpful. And uh, yes, I can feel my estrogen and progesterone dropping as we speak. <laughs> so I, 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 it's falling, falling, falling. <clears throat> and there are um, things you can do and, about that too. Yeah. Whether it's yes, a patch yes, or I, a cream or things that can help. Yes. I will, I will soon be visiting my GYN to address, address these changes. <laughs> So um, you personalize, so you're looking at the whole picture. So what, in addition to um, just having a conversation with someone, are there tests that you use to help people personalize their diet? So one of my tools that is one of my favorite tools is DNA genetic nutrition testing. So it's a saliva test that people get mailed to their home and then they mail the sample back to the lab. So it's an easy, quick test. It takes about a month to get results. The turnaround isn't super fast. Um, but what that does is there are 70 genes that it looks at that are nutrition related. And it walks people through whether it's a food sensitivity like to gluten or dairy or how you process caffeine or your vitamins and minerals. So if somebody came to me and they were doing a vegetarian diet and I can look at their genetics and say, oh, you're at risk of a low B12, like this can be problematic because just a, a vegan diet is you're not getting the B12 from animal products. So we definitely need to supplement. So it really helps me. They go through every nutrient, like what could be high, what could be low. It tells you your, your genetically um, appropriate diet by percentage, this percentage of carbohydrate, protein, fat. And it goes through physical activity and, you know, do you have the gene that you crave sugar? How motivated you are to exercise is a gene. Go figure, right? <laughs> um, are you a bitter taster? So it goes through a lot of nutrition factors and um, weight management factors. Do you crave sugar? Excuse me. Do you crave sugar is a gene. So I have like all five of the obesity genes, and I know that every female in my family is obese. I am the only one that has, is at a healthy weight, and I think because I'm a dietitian <laughs> and because I, I control or monitor or eat, make choices that are better for me. But yeah, so it's really yeah. interesting. So I take all that information um, walk through a report with people, and then I plan a meal plan for them based on their individual genetics. Yeah, that's, that's really helpful um, to have an individualized meal plan because what I hear most often from my clients, I'm not a dietitian nutritionist, so I will give like recipes and broad recommendations but people say, I don't know what to eat. That is the most common statement. I don't know what to eat. I don't know what to eat. So how do you help people figure out what to eat? <laughs> so another one of my favorite tools <laughs> is I have a meal planning platform. So it's AI backed or artificial intelligence backed. And 
I make a nutrition prescription for everybody, and there are literally over 4 million points of personalization. It's like I can go through any nutrient and up and down it if they have specific nutrients that, that are they need to look at. Um, and then on the client's end, they can personalize it as well. They can say, this is my kitchen equipment. This is who's eating with me. Like if you say a kid, they'll make it like a little portion by their age. If you say mm -hmm. your husband, it'll double the portion <laughs> by, you know, his <laughs> height and weight. Um, so, so when there's your exact calorie needs, all your nutrient needs, and you personalize it based on your likes, and there's over 7,000 dietitian crafted recipes in there, you can add your own recipes. Um, there's the possibility of meal kits in there. So if I was dealing with that nurse that works the night shift that doesn't have time to eat and only wants fast food, I'll say, hey, you may want to look at these meal kits. They can be either ready to eat meals that you just microwave or like your traditional meal kits where they come measured ingredients that you make. But most people don't do the meal kits. It's just recipes. So if here's my meal plan, oh, I hate that. Uh, let me find another one that fits and you can like change them out in the instant. If I decide, oh, well, I'm going to a restaurant right now. That restaurant, if it is, um, it'll find restaurants local to you and they have to be national, like um, a Panera, Chipotle, a Starbucks, some national chain. It can show you what on the menu fits into your specific nutrition prescription. It kind of does like the green, wow. yellow, red, so I can eat out. Um, but yeah, it gives you recipes for every meal. You choose what meal times you eat, and it'll just keep generating recipes. <laughs> and what it also well, has, a yeah. So if you want to say, you know, put this in my shopping cart, you click, and it can make shopping lists from your recipes, and then you could alter your shopping list by, I need detergent, add that. <laughs> Um, or take this away. I have it in my fridge. So you can change it, send it to a store near you um, to get groceries delivered if you need to or whatever. It can shoot it over. But what I like the best about it is for people that want to track. If they want to say, I ate this, so you can scan an item that's in your pantry if you're just having a snack or, you know, say, I ate this for the recipes in there. I can do a nutritional analysis and it goes very granular to every single nutrient. Wow. So you totally can answer the question. What do I eat? Like I am sending everybody to you because so what I generally recommend for brain health, which is Dr. Bredesen's recommendation is something called a keto flex 12, three. Can I go over this and you can tell me if this is something that you could help people with? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So keto is, is getting into a low level of ketosis. We usually use the, the keto flex, which is just a little finger prick to check um, first glucose and then ketones. And um, it is about 70% vegetable. So lots of fiber, lots of variety, all the flavonoids and the um, phytochemicals and, but about 70% of the calories are healthy fat. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes when you look visually at your plate, it visually looks like 70% of the plate is vegetables and lots of leafy greens and cruciferous and allium, um, the, the onions, garlic, leeks. So 70% of the plate looks like vegetables, but sometimes it's hard for people to determine what is 70% of the calories of fat, because that just might be two tablespoons of olive oil, really. Right. Um, in a day. But you would help people figure that out. Absolutely. And get the meal plan and they can they can change them out. And if if you want a sample, I can put you on and show you what it's like. <laughs> oh yes, I totally do. Then then the twelve three um looks at the time that you're not eating, actually. So the twelve to encourage at least twelve hours of fasting. Um, I do that with my clients too. Out. Yeah, perfect. So yeah. we bump that up to 14 to 16 hours if they have an APOE4 gene. And then the three is to not eat three hours before going to sleep. So you could advise somebody, like hold their hand on how to implement the Keto Flex 12.3 into their life. Yes. Yes. 
Yay. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. So um, I know that you have something coming up. So March 14th, you have a program that starts. I um, do. Eight, week program. eight weeks to wellness. Yeah, so I call it eight weeks to wellness. And if you look at all the literature of how do people have success, it's all this hybrid model of individual group and all the tools they need. So I created this model that all the research says is successful. So it's eight weeks. I've done it in 16 weeks before, and I feel like eight weeks is probably just the right amount of time to get people to learn and know what to do, where I'm always available after the eight weeks. But we start each week with an education session, so I'm teaching some habit of health, <laughs> um, just teaching how to eat, live better, and then we have after that um, education, then there is group support and discussion and um they hold each other accountable like this group has been amazing like the support that they give each other and ideas and really like wait you said last week you were going to do this <laughs> it's so much fun for me just to watch the interaction happen um yeah so it's and then i also do individual so while it's mostly group the education is group then there's group support then i meet with everybody individually every other week so in that and then to only your listeners i am going to offer free to get on the meal planning platform if you sign up with me for this eight week to wellness so the meal planning platform is typically 99 dollars a month so it because it's like two months, eight weeks, you're saving um, like almost $200. Yes, that's amazing. Ooh, I'm so excited to offer this to the listeners. So how do people get in touch with you, Joni? So you could email me, my name, Joni, J-O-N-I, at Nutrition Coaching. And then four is the number. And you is the letter. So nutritioncoaching4u.com, or you can visit my website, nutritioncoaching for the number you, the letter.com. Awesome. So they just have to say, hey, Joni, I heard you on Get to the Root of It. Can I have yes. that special deal? <laughs> yes. Yes. That you have to tell wrong. me you, you heard it here, or you'll be charged for the meal planning platform. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be able to send clients to you. Um, so you're, you're local to the Carroll County area and you mm -hmm. said something about a Sunday walk with your pup Raven. So tell us about that. Yeah. So every Sunday morning we have a group. It's mostly women every now and then there's a man that pops in, but it is mostly women. We meet at Sykesville middle school at 8 AM on Sunday morning. And it's just a group of us and we walk. Sometimes there's eight of us. Sometimes there's 20 of us. It just depends who shows up. I have like a little messenger group that if anybody's interested, like we put them in so we know who to wait for. <laughs> um, and everybody shows up and we just walk and talk. And it sounds like we walk really far because we walk like five miles. But when you're talking to people, people, it doesn't feel like it. But if somebody says, oh, like we've had, I work with a lot of clients trying to lose weight. So some people aren't as fast um, and they can't do five miles. So there's always somebody that turns around early. If you show up and you say, I can't do that. That's fine. There will always be somebody to walk with. We have a great group and we help everybody, but generally we'll do five miles if everybody's into it. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, if you need a, a satellite group in different areas of the county, maybe we could talk about that because I think a walking group is an amazing idea. I love it. Yeah, so I am actually um, chair of Advancing Health and Wellness Leadership Team. And under the partnership, we created Walk Carol, which is just those walking groups all around the county. Oh, so they exist. So they exist. Everybody or you can create your own. Beautiful. Love that. 
Joni, you've been um, a wealth of information today. Is there anything else that you want to share before we wrap it up? I'm not necessarily share, but just want to say I'm so appreciative for having me here. And I take good care of everybody and help them, you know, hit a goal. Like that's, that's what it's all about. Same as yours, I think, yeah. trying to get America healthier, right? <laughs> Getting better yeah, habits awesome. and preventing disease. <laughs> That's your why. That's that's why you get up in the morning. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, you can find Joni at Joni J O N I at Nutrition Coaching for You, the number for the letter U dot com, and I will have that information in the show notes on how you can take advantage of her special um, and her upcoming four weeks to wellness. Eight weeks that starts to March fourteenth. Eight week. Eight weeks to wellness. Eight weeks to wellness. Thank you. Um, Nutrition Coaching for You, Eight Weeks to Wellness Program, starting March 14th. So, Joni, thank you again for being here. I look forward to our next connection. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks for joining the conversation today. Remember to check out the Brain Health Quiz at www.rootcausology.com quiz.